Welcome to Rockcast. Dyer's in production. Let's rock it. Let's rock it. Let's rock it. I noticed everybody stopped, turned, looked at me, and then it was set into the uh, microphone, <laughs> Dennis. <laughs> so yeah, we you you tell your story. I'll I'll remember it my way. Okay. <laughs> yeah, but no, I remember that. I was like, shit. And then whoever it was on the on Fox or cable, somebody was like, who's with Dennis right now? It's like Dennis is just fine. I just bought a bunch of cocaine and whiskey, and I'll get over this. <laughs> and then I moved. All right, let's do this. So okay. Miss Sarah P, the queen of all that is metal. Uh, <laughs> I, these are this one I kind of thought about. Well, I had I asked people to give me ideas, and this one came up, and I thought, eh, everybody has something. And the idea of these is to bring, you know, positive thought, which goes against my instincts, but it feels good, I guess. It's like swimming in lava. Anyways, be nice, Dennis. So, what is your favorite quote or song lyric or something like that that inspires you or just keeps you going or brings you up? Or something like that. See, as soon as I ask the questions, I feel incredibly stupid. I'm like, that's a dumb question. That's a no, that's dumb right. question. I don't really, you know, I, I'm generally a happy person. You you know that about me. I, I, not a ton gets me down, but um, I will, I've got a couple favorite lyrics, and I thought about this already, and I should probably go with the ones I have tattooed on my body. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, I so obviously thirty six crazy kids at the end of August uh, carved across our chest loyalty. I got that little baby not on my chest, but I got it on my arm. That's bad. Um, you know that's important to me because my friends and my family are you know my biggest inspiration and the most important thing in the world to me. And so that that's a big one. Um, and then I've got some unearth lyrics on my leg, which are very ironic, and I'll tell you why. Um, it's all hail the shrine from all hail the shrine. Um, off the album The March and the lyrics are I will dedicate my soul, dedicate my life for you obviously that's self-explanatory for me however when I asked Trevor what they meant <laughs> the singer he said that song is about organized religion and people blindly following it <laughs> oh. so, yeah, it fit. but the, the great part about lyrics are you, you, know, you write them and they don't have to mean the same thing to everyone and everyone adapts them to their own, you know, life. And that's how people, a lot of people get through life. So a um, couple honorable mentions. There's Ebb and Flow, Misery Signals. There's some great, great stuff in that song. A um, couple Norma Jean ones that I can't think of the names of the song, but I love almost all of them. So I don't know. Just the, those were the couple that came to mind first. So. Yeah. When I thought of this question and asking you, I was like, that's like asking, I mean, the, you are music. So like you're, just, but I think, and I think given the questions the day before kind of helps because uh, it gives you time to think about it. It did, because otherwise I would have been all over the place going, oh my gosh, <laughs> all these lyrics going through my head going, oh. <laughs> yeah. When I think about it, it's, it, it's horrible because whenever I get inspired my song for some stupid reason, I blame my mom. Uh, I usually go to uh, Grease soundtrack songs. Like, oh, like what, dude? Seriously, my head's fucked up when I'm when I'm like when something awesome. goes sad or like a, like a want want moment in my head. I go beauty school dropout, beauty school <laughs> dropout, no graduation day for you. Uh, uh, if I only had a brain, constantly <laughs> plays like mockingly in the back of my head. I um, will tell you, like uh, one song that I listen to. If I'm having a crappy day, and this comes from my uh, one of my coworkers, Beth, because uh, she listens to it all the time in the office next to me, uh, Pink's Blow Me One Last Kiss. Oh, nice, Love it. Nice. When I'm yeah. having a crappy day, I turn that up, and it just makes me feel better. <laughs> and the queen of metal just did admit to listening to a Pink song on the regular. <laughs> That's all right. That's all right. I got weird ones, man. Rufus Kong's Right Place, Wrong. It must have been the right place, but it must have been the wrong <laughs> time. But question number two. And this one's a bigger one, and I, you already read it, and I might have reworded it a little different. But it, I think it, just something that we you hope that we as a society take away from 2020. Maybe a silver lining. I was going to say for COVID, but COVID's really, it's been pretty much January to January. We're a year in. 
Um, I, I don't want to dwell on what we've all lost. That's obvious. And my right. God, the the Rhino stagehands, the that whole industry is one of the ones that people don't seem to realize have lost everything. Look, so question. I, what oh. I hope uh, we're all in. We've all been in this all together all along, right? right. No, nobody. People like to play sides, but when it comes to stuff like this, there are no sides. It's it's all or nothing. It's all of us. The entire world. It's not just America either. You know. And so I hope that when this is over, people realize how selfish some of them were and get over that and uh, continue to better themselves by working together with their community and other people. It's, you know, one thing too that I've noticed and I think is a great thing that's come out of this is how many people and families are doing things like this. You know, how it, I may not have talked to you for a year, you know, but seems like now, a couple minutes ago. <laughs> yeah, I mean, but it's it's easier to it's making forcing people to connect more. So I hope that doesn't end. Yeah, yeah. Well, I hope that goes forward and people stay more in touch with their friends and their family, and you know, just really work towards bettering themselves and you know their community. It's <clears throat> I've seen a lot of beautiful things. I'll tell you this when I look at it, as I do, because I'm not a smart person. I am not a smart person. I'm an intelligent person, but I'm not smart. Uh, but I, I, let's judge it through my weed store. When I started working there, moms would come in, and they like buy a little joint. And they buy that joint so that when little Timmy fucker takes a nap, they can go out on the back porch and take a couple puffs and not murder him. Now all of a sudden, husband's home. Or hashtag hubby's home, now wife's home. Either way, family dynamic. Everybody's stuck in the fucking house together. Yeah. Now mom's coming in buying an ounce of marijuana <laughs> or dad because she hates her husband. He bitches about her terrible children and she goes, no fucker, those are your kids. I've been here every day with them or hashtag the other way around. Dude, can I make that right. very important? I'm hashtagging everything here. Mm -hmm. Generic person B and A have a generic baby <laughs> and they all, and they, and, and, but I've seen, I remember the mom's freaking out and the dad's freaking out about having to teach their kids. Teachers are getting yeah. big raises after this. Welcome to Appreciation oh, Land, you yeah, motherfucking right. beautiful humans. They do yeah. this with 30 of them at a time, and your own child, you want to murder because yeah. you can't figure out how to use a Zoom meeting. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> through, through the first six months, it was horrible, and then, you know, there was no school, and now I see a lot of people getting into it. The kids are getting in it. They're learning. My own children, you know, the ones that are still in school are figuring fans it out. are going to realize again mm -hmm. what matters, and fans are going to be a million times more grateful you know, I was talking talking to someone about this on my way here, actually, to the office. And, you know, there there are a lot of businesses that are failing. And everyone's doing the poor me thing. And I get it. You know, I own a fucking bar. We're closed right now. We don't get to open until at least after January 1st. Everyone's struggling. But don't do the poor me thing. We're all there, you know. That's it's, what I'm saying. I mean, there's so many resources available. Like, I... For, Two businesses was able to apply and get money. Yeah, to, well, you know, and so it's there are things available, and everybody's too worried about you know themselves to figure out how to make it work. <laughs> it frustrated me. Like, like how important like is Christmas? How important is Thanksgiving? I mean, we could do it just like this. You could still be there, and mm -hmm. again, you don't have to listen to your your racist drunk uncle all of a sudden and bring up why the world could be a better place, or you could just everybody turn them down. You have a pre-meeting, and you're like, all right, when Jerry starts going off, everybody just hit the mute button. And he'll be like, and then he'll just be like, all right, oh, oh, he's still going. Somebody get me some turkey. And boobs was a great our country works is blindly consuming forward and not a lot of time for self-reflection. I'm watching it on a personal level. A lot of people all of a sudden are like, fuck, I don't like me very much. It's like, well, you're the same person you were 20 years ago, man. Yeah. That we know we're we're evolutionary creatures. You gotta change. And you with your battles in life, I mean, you literally you whooped on on the C word like it owed you money. I mean, that's pretty <laughs> awesome. You know? So you've got you understand I think on a level and a lot of us don't get how beautiful it all is. And everybody yeah, thinks I, mean, I hate it so things, much. That's I love one of the life. things you go through that uh changes your whole outlook on life and you know, it's you know. And I'm just thankful I'm here to talk about it. Yeah, well, that's, like this, that's a that, new that thing is, to me. That, I would say, that was one of, always one of my motivators, you know? Like, I didn't, you know, I see, you know, 
you, all of you musicians in Alaska, I didn't give you a shot at a show because I wanted you to make money for me. I gave you a shot at a show so, so you could hang out with your favorite national band. They could maybe see you, like you, like your music, you know, and that you maybe go on to be successful. And it doesn't even have to be in music. Like you said, like, just seeing you happy and healthy is enough. You got to forgive yourself first, though, man. Uh, people yeah. can be more selfish. I mean, you don't worry. Go ahead. It's okay to worry about yourself because if you're happy, you're going to make everybody else happy. Yeah. And uh, for some reason now, I'm getting this gross, disgusting <laughs> kick off of trying to make other people happy and smile. <laughs> and it feels better than a lot of... I, I sound it's like okay. a stupid... 80s motivational cartoon like inspirational multi-race gang speaker like you know, we're all in this together guys but you know that's what it is though we are all in this together and that pity myself thing everybody's allowed to do that and then i thought we were americans and we you definitely they're definitely it's okay to be down i mean that's you know part of life but you pick yourself back up and you start over again that's how it works we're america snowflake i like i don't know you know People, everybody believes in different things as far as up there and, you know, nature and everything. But I'll tell you what, I don't think that power of positive thinking is a big deal to me and since going through cancer, right? Because I tried not to let myself down most of the time, you know, but there were times that I broke down, you know, because I didn't think I was going to make it. I didn't think I could do it. Uh, it was fucking hard but yeah. you know, everybody around you thinking positively keeps you thinking positively and it's a huge influence on your mind and your body it's huge absolutely you do every time you woke up with this you were not one second ever alone and i know that we look we, we we're, we're music people we know what it feels like to be on a stage even if you're not performing you just at one of those places where you get to be sarah part of the whole thing that just drives me crazy that I've never been somehow there with you because of my stupidness. But, uh, uh, that feel, you feel the crowd well, in, in any, uh, sports events, uh, religious experiences, hey, yeah. you get all these people thinking one thing, dude, we're genetically, we've got parts yeah. of our brains. Let's wrap it up. Yeah. Let's do, like let's that. do five more minutes and just wrap it up. I mean, they literally at that. Me, that's what I've been, this happens every time. I want to, yeah. That A and R thing was like one of my the favorite things I've ever done. Like I, I think we had we did the um, the rock or indie one, and then we did the metal one, and both of them we had on Sunday nights. It and killed. It was just what I mean. Coots was packed on a Sunday night, like, and the fact that we were able to bring you know record label reps and producers to Alaska to see. You know, you guys would never, ever have played in front of somebody like that, ever. Yeah. I you would know? have never and left Alaska even, if it wasn't for that show, Sarah. That's that show changed my life. When yeah, somebody, even even if you do live down here in the states, how many times, if you're you're lucky, if somebody like that is going to see your show, somebody's going to have to be interested in you, pass it along. They think you're cool, and then they're going to go to your show. You know, this was completely different. You know. Putting three very important people in front of 20 of Alaska's best bands, it was amazing. It was just, it was so cool. And it, it you moved, uh, Lavoie moved because of that. Um, you know, there, things came out of it. It was great. You know, it's weird because you always look at it like, like, of course, you're, you're, oh, you are frozen solid. Okay, and we're back. Okay, cool. I can edit that part out. So, unless you just had a stroke or something, let me know. But, but like, I don't mean to say, it, I don't want to sound insulting at all, but, like, the level of their clout. I mean, this was A&R, or this was Bullet Tooth Records, CBS Records, and motherfucking Metal Blade. Yes. So, when they talked to me and said that I had potential, it carried on. Like, you, I've always just felt like you were just like, oh, the poor little bastard. Give him a show. You know, like, like I've always, I've got a very imposter's complex. I'm like, I'm funny. You know, I'm fun to have around. It's like watching a clown set himself on fire, you know. Uh, you know, of course, I'm, I'm an entertainer, you know. it's it's it, But I never really thought that I had any talent. And I still, to this day, fight that demon. Um, enough people tell you, people like you give you opportunities, and eventually you're like, eh, maybe. What was I talking about? God damn this brain of mine. 
when, when the label guys told you that you Dude, were I believed it. Like, I was like, are you for real? And then I read the thing that they said, and, and I was just like, fuck. And that was the first time in my whole life I was like, bam. And then I went down to the States. I went and saw the shows. I went and saw the possibility. I Like I said, I'm not a smart person, but I'm intelligent. I've done the, the what was I going to do in Alaska? Die? Yeah. Keep drinking? Keep suffering? Fuck, man, you move here the first day you're here you have just gained five months of usable fucking time five <laughs> months of usable time and you know what your body i didn't know this it loves yeah. the sun going up and down it loves yeah. that it loves that you start feeling normal vitamin d what i don't have to eat this i don't have to eat five thousand <laughs> beats to get vitamin d dude, dude and then and like go outside <laughs> and you're in san diego san francisco san diego san diego so I uh, I don't know what the rain situation is there, but it, it, it's it's almost always sunny and seventy five. Yeah, almost that's always. Right. Here it rains all the time. I love the fucking rain. You know what yeah. you don't have to do? You don't have to shovel rain. <laughs> Never. It's always green here. I could yeah. pop out. You know, middle of January, and I'm doing hiking for rot videos. Well, I was. Yeah. She's, she's getting all worn out. <laughs> Upton. All right. Well, you know. You know, this is going to be great. Oh, my God. Thank yeah. you so much. And I'm excited to see what happens. We're This will be over soon. And then it's going to be a new life. I, I want to get back the way it was. No, thank you. Let's do something new, man. Let's try something new. Let's learn. And I think you're right about people with the slow learning curve. Because more yeah. people this time around, they bought the toilet paper this time, but only for like two days. We, we It was back on the shelf. They, you Dude, know. That is the last fucking thing I would hoard if it came down to survival. Are you serious? Like, you can't even build stuff it? out of it. Duct tape would be more productive. You could use a smooth size to wipe your butt and build an outhouse <laughs> out of the other side. You know what I mean? Yeah. Anyway. Can, I'm an optimistic pessimist. Uh, I'm pretty sure everything's <laughs> fucked, but I'm okay with it. The thing of it is, like, when it first happened, it was like, oh, shit, I moved here for a completely new job, new life, and it's over. The beauty of it is, when it comes back, it's going to be a completely different world, so I'm going to be on the front end of the learning curve, which That's I what? couldn't ask for anything better than no. that. Like to, we, uh, okay. <laughs> All right. All right. I'll never hang this up. You, okay. I love. Have a great day. I Thank you. you for this. Thank you. We'll do it again soon. You're one of the best humans I know in the world. Uh, Bye. <laughs> I can't wait to see what you bring us, Sarah. I fucking can't. Yes. And I'll have a band for you. You give yes. me an opening spot for some festival at three in the morning. I don't give a shit. <laughs> I'll just play at your house from a safe distance. Deal. All right. <laughs> bye bye. Bye. Hey. All right. Oh, now I get, yeah, you got to hang up. Okay. Because I can't see the screen. <laughs> well, I didn't have my logo up the whole time, but that was a moment with Sarah. Peterson and from what you just watched there's actually like a hour long uh, video so she's going to get her own little standalone one and I'm going to do it this time it was just a great talk great talk um, so thank you Sarah uh, if you guys want to be on one of these get a hold of me All right, I just and got all the info course. will be in places and hopefully this recording turned out alright or I'm going to freak out I love dude posters look at, look at I live in a I live in a shed 16 year old me loves this shit man you know it's like a mechanic who lives above a, a shop I basically sleep in a studio, so I like think of it. Oh, puppy wants to be on it. Mm -hmm. I right, you. I don't know what's wrong yeah. with me lately, right. but it's. You got a format or whatever? Like I'll just go with you. Basically, and usually I w I should have gotten a hold of you with the questions first. Uh, it's just <laughs> it, yeah. I, I get Sarah's the only one I gave an answer. It's stupid. The first question I literally feel like an idiot for asking, and the second one's kind of optimistic. I want Ooh, Alaska. yeah. Yeah, Vaboo's from Alaska. We're here with them live on the podcast. We're stuck in rush hour with Rot. Let's Dude, do this. You got to be on the one. You, uh, Pat Evelyn, and Sean, I'm going to be doing a thing also called the Stonecast through Zoom where we just smoke weed and bullshit. That's it. That's all we do. We just smoke weed for, for pain window and bullshit. Oh, okay. Yeah. Hold on. Oh, nice. Yes. This is better. This is better. I got like nine wigs in here. This is my, my little stage room that I put my shows from. So I got all the props. I don't know where my sound effects machine is right now, though. But yeah, man. I also yeah, I wouldn't mind doing a full interview with you. I'm trying, man. I'm I'm just trying to do stuff and get this out the. I got coffee cups for sale now. <laughs> Feed the robots. I don't know. I don't want to get into it. All right. 
First question, my man, and uh, I kind of wish I'd asked you this just so you we're, had more. We're, we're go- this is we're it. We're going. We always go and we don't go when we do go, and then I have hours of editing because I put it together to make it seem like I'm a flawless idiot. In other words, it sucks, and I'm sorry that I'm putting Three, it Three, two, one. My friend, if you could pick any lyric, and I know this is a deep one for you, and I should have given you some prep time because, my God, and you could take your time and think about it, that truly, <laughs> truly inspires you and you feel could inspire other people right now during this time, you know, a push-through song or a push-through quote, you know, anything. Like that. I know the first question is stupid, and I apologize. I try to ask my people for them, and I don't have any people, so I had to come up with my own. Um, a lyric right now that that could send inspiration and hope is what you're asking? So, a lyric for, inspire- or for you, Morley. Yeah, no, I know. It's out of my realm of I feel uncomfortable asking the question. I get it. It's just something, I don't know how to phrase it. Like, there's been some songs that I listen to right now that I really fucking, like, the words mean more to me now than they ever have before. Like, mockingly so. Like, before it was playtime, you know, and now it's like, damn. Um, shit, that shit's real. Well, this this is the opposite of your question, but but I'll start with this as an answer. Perfect. Uh, Perfect. It's been in my head, like, most of the year, just because this year's been so shit and so garbage. You can't... Even even the things you were aspiring to get done, you, you can't fucking get done. They're all in the back burner. We're doing new things to try and, you know, justify, to, to keep our, our idle hands and our minds at ease. Like, you know, we're, we're trying to take on new things. Uh, the lyric that, that, that I don't even listen to the song that often, but it's Dead Milk. <laughs> and it's, it's the chorus. It's the title track. Life sucks, and then you die, and then your soul gets up to the sky. <laughs> I wonder why. Yeah, it's eat a bowl of cereal and sigh. I've been singing that all year just because every day it's like, yeah, life sucks. Then you die. So it, there's that. Yeah. Uh, I, I don't know about anything. I, I can't think of any lyrics that have uh, inspiration right now. That's definitely not what my tonality has been. I, you know, it's hard to... It's hard. It's physically hard, especially to be creative and shit and bring joy. I mean, you you like, you get out there and you do the the band thing, and at least you could see some people that you're bringing some joy to and shit, you know. But like, the people that are just stuck at home, you got to feel for them, man. Even me, I get out and I sell weed, so I get to go to work and interact with humans, man. But some people just can't find motivation. Plus, I'm stuck with all this equipment. I could be making all these songs and shit, and instead, I'm just like, eh, eh, why, why? Maybe I'll never, maybe I'll never get to do a live show again. Even though I just had band practice and it was amazing. Fucking um, amazing. You ever listen to Peter Gabriel? Like, not, I mean, no, I can't say like I could. I have. I probably know all of his songs just from being alive. You sledgehammer. Yeah. Why don't you call my name? That's that fucking 80s fucking song. Uh, Salisbury Hill. You probably heard that. Climbing up on Salisbury Hill. Do, 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 do. I can see the city lights. Do, do. All right, well, my inspirational lyric is going to be from Peter Gabriel's song, Salisbury Hill. It's a song that he wrote about when he was a teenager, and him and his friends went up to this mountain, Salisbury Hill, in their town, and he fucking ate a bunch of acid, right? And he was tripping balls on acid, but he was tripping out, seeing what he was seeing, because he didn't know if they were too. And so he sees this eagle, and that's like part of the lyric. He's like, eagle flew out of the night, boom, 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 boom. Something, something to observe. Anyway, the lyric, though, is, uh, he says, uh, the eagle's, the eagle's flying right in front of him, right? He's on this mountain, he's tripping balls on acid, and there's an eagle flying right in front of him. And the lyric is, I could not believe the information, I just had to trust this imagination. My heart was going boom, boom, boom! So, he said, grab your things, I've come to take you home. That right there is, you know, the eagle, he's fucking tripping balls on acid, he's done drugs, right? But the eagle is telling him, the eagle's touched into whatever else that higher power is. You yeah. know, when you do rooms and whatever. So the eagle's like, dude, it's going to be okay. I know you're not going to believe this information. Just trust in imagination. I know that your heart's going boom, boom, boom. Hey, who's interrupting my interview? That would then, be uh, my shitty producer, which happens to be me. Sorry. <laughs> Quit interrupting my interview. Yeah. And then... Yeah, anyway, I, I think that that's my lyric. Because it says, you know, 
we're not in control of everything right now. But I guess if you just trust in what you think might be good, I don't know. Yeah, you should have given me these answers. In advance, yeah, the next series I will, the next round I will. I'll do it in a year. I was thinking about that today. I was like, in a year I want to come back and ask the same fucking questions. But every week I'm going to come up with new questions. I'm going to, I do, I'm going to do one episode about well, a that month. That was a beautiful because... answer. Are you ready for question number two? Yeah, sorry. All right, let's do a wardrobe change real quick. I'm going to go ahead and restart the timer and stop this recording. Click. I'm trying to sell candles, bro. It's all good. <laughs> all right, my friend. Question number dose for Mr. Boobs. Uh, the second question is basically, what do you hope? God, I sound like such a fucking douchebag. I don't know what's wrong with me, boobs. I'm not the man I used to be. Is this, is this part in the thing too? Or are you going to reshoot where you ask the questions? Because I like that you can't ask the question. Yeah, no, no. This all goes into it. It just, I kind of edit it out. So I do some hard edits. So like, you know, there's uh, question number two for you, my man, is what's something you hope society as a whole, it could be either not just our country, either worldwide or in this, this fucked up society of ours, which is just twisted, um, that you hope maybe we take forward from this, a lesson we learn, maybe something people will get back into or something again, positive that maybe could come out of the whole world halting and reevaluating the way we do. Well, let's face it, every fucking thing. Uh, yeah? uh, the biggest thing that... that um, I'm from a weird time. You are too. We're from the time where we're before the internet. So when we say shit, I think that generationally here I'm speaking, when we say shit, we mean it. Mm. I look you in the face and I tell you that I'm going to fuck you up. I'm going to fuck you up. Nowadays, people on the internet, they say, I'm going to fuck you up. And they don't mean that. No. Because because they couldn't, and also they wouldn't. So there's this whole thing about the woke culture, people that are woke, and I'm so woke, and I'm a, I'm awake. I'm so woke. With, 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 with every, every security for all these, all these different fucking clicks of people, all these different kinds of people, people with different backgrounds, people with different beliefs. You're so woke. You're so in touch with that. Here's here's what I hope that the entire world takes out of this. I hope your podcast goes international overnight. Everyone, everyone out there that's woke right now, you need to take a fucking nap because you've been awake for a little bit too fucking long. All right? The sensitivity is off the fucking charts. And I'm talking worldwide, man. Um, I'll still say things in certain circles, and I'll, and I'll use terminology here now. Uh, I use gay all the time to describe when something sucks or is lame. Oh, it's stupid. Yeah. No, that's that's my answer. I hope that we can. I hope that everyone that's woke can take a nap. That, that's all I'm asking. Just chill out for a minute. Just you know the out. jokes I write, and you're you're a stand up, or you're getting into it, or you do it. It seems to be one of the 40 things you do as you work your way into the new hobo gym position of Alaska for the rest of your life. Um, I told that to Sarah Peterson and she laughed her ass off. Like She's like, oh my God, you called it. Yeah, that was beautiful. I watched that whole podcast, dude. I love Enzo's podcast. I, he won't do it like this, so I can't get on there now. But as soon as like I know I'm going to Alaska, I'll be like, bitch, you are scheduled me on that podcast. Yeah, you, know, yeah you know, same as you. you. You do the editing. He likes the... You know, it's it's his format preference. He wants yeah. you sitting there and lets yeah. you do all that. Stuff. We were talking about the sensitivity thing, and as a comedian, like I swear to God, before every joke I think of, because I've run a comedy show seven hours a day at the weed store, bro. My customers tip me the fuck out of me because I make them laugh so hard just selling weed all day. I got a million jokes, you know. Uh, but uh, uh oh, what's I saying? Oh, the sensitivity. Looks like I'm always like hashtag. Like I say hashtag now before every punchline. Because if you say hashtag before anything, it's like a joke mocking the fact that you have to be like, oh, hashtag equal rights, equal lefts, you know, woman yeah. abuse is for everyone, that kind of shit. You got to be, not, and that's not one of my jokes. I don't believe in beating women, and I don't talk about it on stage if I did. No, I'm sorry. Oh. <laughs> all right, man. That was it. That's all I want. And also to get people to get comfortable with the idea of me talking. But you got this whole setup. If you ever want to do any kind of project, like in a podcast thing or anything weird or anything cool. Also, I want to start doing challenges and hurting myself on camera because I know that gets views. Like hot stuff. I've been training myself to eat hot stuff. <laughs> and, uh, you know, 
I would love to hurt somebody with me, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Really, man. I got room and some mats I could throw down. I'll hurt myself. Yeah. Well, if you want to do, you know, if you want to do a, a longer one, uh, like you said, we can do that whenever. Just give me just a little bit of heads up and I'll be able to do it. Yeah, that would be dope. Do you, yeah, I would love it because I just want, and those ones, those are actually, uh, it's it's just about you. It just basically asks what's going on in your life, where you're at, where you're from, what what your plans are, dude. It's usually about an hour long, and then I try to edit down to so, two thirty. Fuck that. Minutes. This one will be good. God damn it, better be. I don't know until I listen to it. Then I'm like, fuck. I'll have my producer do it. She she literally yeah. should have sent you a questionnaire. I even have a release form. I won't make you sign one. I know you love me, and you will never sue me. All right, boobs, Mister Boobs. God damn it! Hey, by the way, I have your magnet here, and it hangs. Usually, it fell down, and I'm not going to reach for it right now. But usually, it hangs right here on my microphone, facing me. Those Mister Boobs things. I threw some more stickers, and I threw a candle in your package. Oh, You'll get oh. I can't also, wait. Bless your house. Bless my your my house. fancy shanty. Yeah, I even got Christmassy this year. All right, hold on. I'm going to go ahead and say a wrap-up real quick. So All right. that's professional. In three, two, one. Three. Mr. Boobs, fucking anything you want to plug real quick? Uh, anything you want to say? Any charities, donations, any crap or anything you're doing or just live feeds you're doing? Are you guys still doing that? Uh, yeah, I mean, uh, check out the Eternal Cowboys Facebook and Instagram. I don't know what it is. Facebook, Eternal Cowboys. It'll be right here. It's, yeah, it'll be right there somewhere. Yeah. Uh, if you know what my real name is, you can follow me. I still do live and weird shit from my page. Uh, but I do want to give a shout out to my dear friend Dennis Reed. Uh, I think what you're doing is really awesome, and I'm glad that you are finding more footing and comfortability with this platform. It's really cool, uh, and I wish you the best. And I hope to do more of these with you. And uh, rot and roll, right? Count on it. Thank you. I was gonna do blue, but. Uh, my girlfriend said she likes it, so I'll stay blonde. Yeah, no, it, it, it's kind of cool. It gives you a, a wisdom look, like you're about to start a tech company maybe or, or something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. All right, my man. I love you, dude. You are one of my favorite humans to walk this fucking planet, brother. Thanks, Dennis. I love you, too. I look forward to checking this episode out whenever it's ready. Yeah, it'll be a little bit, but not too long. I got two segments now. Sarah's is already done, so now I just got to do yours, and hopefully that package if that happens to get here if not then it'll be mostly dopey it or not dopey it dead language <laughs> and uh some screaming tracalo in the background so yeah you know all right man i'm out love you brother yeah. stay safe yeah i love you buddy all right bye do 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 all right man well that was one of my favorite humans in the world mr boobs um, thank you for playing. Thank you for being on. We got a nice little chat in there too, so I might put you in your own little uh, conversation with you said you don't mind and uh hopefully as always the audio came out good. Um maybe I'll put some information here about getting all that stuff that he said or whatever I'll do, I'll do something. This has been really fun for me and I hope everybody's enjoying it, dude. I fucking love it. And just remember, man, Rot loves you all. And three, two, one. All right, guys. On this episode of A Moment with Tracy Abbott. Uh, what can I say about her? She's my BFF. She's, She's an amazing human being. being. She, she just, just graduated, graduated college. college. Uh, she, she drives, drives a van. van. <laughs> not a creepy way. Not when I can try with my teeth. I don't have a yeah. ramp or anything in it. No. no. So no. there's that. But uh, She drives people, people in, in the van. van. Yeah. And they're supposed to be in the van. van. It's, it's not, not any weird oh. picking, picking up homeless people in Tacoma, Tacoma situation. situation. Um, I will, though. I feed them. She, she does, does feed them. them. A couple times a week. What's going what on? Else? So, uh, what's happening here? Of course, of course we were oh. Alaskans. Alaskans. She, she was, was my band manager. manager. Uh, any, any photos or videos, videos you see of me from, from probably around 2007, 2007 to... Now? 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 Yeah. Now. Well, minus the last two and a half years because I've been in school. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. Anyway. We've been doing that. So, so yeah, yeah, it's, it's good, good to have you on. on. She's, She's my, my first and only, only guest in the series, series because 
She, she came, came by, by to bring me this, this awesome, awesome and amazing, amazing Slayer BFF pendant, which, which you can't see from there, but we'll be there. there. Tracy, Tracy brought, brought me there. See, see, all this stuff is the B-rate stuff, rate stuff that I put at the end, at the end of all my episodes. Mm-hmm. I put a, uh, oh my god, that is so dope. It's going to be my face, hold on. It's going my smile. Weirdo. So, so yeah. we're, we're going slap. to ask Slayer. Oh, oh buy yeah, a Dennis yeah. cup. What is, I'm sorry. Dyer Sin Productions. That, buy one. It's fantastic. And you put coffee in it or your weed or. Well, she's, she's been, been getting, getting smarter. smarter. I've been going crazy doing my production, my production company, company, which I don't think she understands how awesome it is. Yet. Well, fuck yeah, I do. I got a cup, dude. She, she did buy a cup. I bought two. I got one that's still in the pack. Beautiful lady. So, Look at that. Yeah. Zero frames skipped. God, we're running so Hi, mommy. mommy. Your mom's so pleased. She's She's anyway. Gorgeous. So, I've, I've got, got a couple, couple questions. questions. That's what, what we do on the show. show. Okay. Um, um, although, all, all the stuff that I edit out, out may actually, actually get added on to Rockcast 2.0, 2.0, a conversation. conversation. Which is, <laughs> yeah. Oh, Jesus Christ. Well, because well, I've got an hour and a half of Pat I've got an hour and a half of fucking Sarah Peterson. Yeah, but they do cool shit. You... So Whatever. Anyway, okay. I just love. So, so we're, we're just gonna, gonna start with a summary real quick, quick since you don't do cool shit. shit. I, well, um, what, what is, is it you're doing, doing right now for a living with all this education that you went? You're, you're making a ton of money, and, and well, I'm not making a ton school. of money, but oh, I, yeah. Yeah. I'm not making a ton of money, but no, I'm getting you, by. You, and I'm you just kind of slid by through college, right? You barely got good grades. No, no, I, oh, you were there. I made the honor society. I'm like, how many years in a row? What all the I, my whole I, and how many I, years? I have my years? Let's be it. Okay, all the things, yeah. all the things, all the things. She doesn't do anything. And, and now, now she's, she's taking that, that and you, you do what? What, what do you do right now? I work with uh, homeless. I work with uh, people addic- with addictions. I I am a SUVP certified by the state of Washington as an SUVPT, which means I can counsel under supervision folks through group sessions. With, you know. You know, yeah, shit like that. So she, she doesn't, doesn't do anything, anything cool, though. Well, no, and, but no, I did get to fucking work for Slayer and Lamb of God in the same day, and that was great. Oh, I got to build shows for everybody that well, ever wanted to work for. She used to, to be. Uh, she used, used to work with, with a. Uh, uh, before Rona, was a stage hand. Yeah, yeah a stage hand. I don't know. And before school. Company or not. Well, you can, but yeah. it's whatever. A lot of people out there, those are the ones that are suffering the hard ones. Yeah, I wrote all of them. No, no, none of them are working. What, what is, is a song lyric or, or set of lyrics or quote that, I don't, I don't know if I like the word inspires, inspires but, you know, motivates you. Gives uh, you up, Delusion gives you Pandemic you by Lamb of God. There's a lyric in there, a verse, whatever, right? Right. Um, hold on, because I pulled it up, and now my phone's being a douche canoe. Yep. Um, because that's how shit works when you need it. It would um, be a good yeah. app. Douche canoe. Yeah, fuck, dude. <laughs> so, okay, so I'm sorry. <laughs> Read him. A uh, delusion pandemic by Lamb of God. There's a uh, part in it that it says, uh, "And now is the moment when everything can change. You are completely responsible for your own life, and no one is coming to save you from yourself. So stop blaming your problems on any and everything else. It does not matter one tiny fucking bit how unfair you think the world is. It's only what you do." Right here, right now, right this fucking instant that matters. It's your choice to sink or swim. And I swam. And you swam. But there was a time I was at the bottom. Bottom, bottom, fucking bottom. And uh, uh, that, that's, that's the best, best place, place to start, start though. though. Yeah. That was. We all <laughs> have different, different chapters, chapters, man. And, and uh, uh, that's, that's great. great. <laughs> but, but, you know, you know changing, changing that. that to that, that new person and personality and everything's hard and a lot of people I don't think can do it or, or don't, don't get the opportunity to do it or they're too afraid of breaking to fight for it um, sitting with your unpacked bag is, is a rough ride <laughs> yeah it's hard to do especially sober and a lot of people don't yeah, yeah how long get my, my friend Tracy here, here uh, as, as long as I've known her didn't, didn't drink, drink. Uh, but, but apparently before I met her she was quite a terror on alcohol. She, she may look tall because of the chair, chair but she's, she's like, like this big. 
She, she picked me up by my throat, throat once for, for no reason. reason. Fuck off. No I, reason I'm trying to be a better person. Either. I think, I think it, was it was the same week, week she uh, pushed, pushed me out of the car. car. Oh, my God. In, in my leather, leather jacket. jacket. Brand, Brand new leather. leather. Never, Never did nothing, nothing to Tracy. Tracy. <laughs> and, and she, she just shoved me. me. She, she drove a 300. She was she was real caring back, back then. then. No, Heat. <laughs> my butt hole, dude. <laughs> we have stood at the front of Iron Maiden together twice. Dude. Once in the grass. Once, Once in the row. Remember? Uh, we, we met Anthrax. She, she cried, cried for 42, 42 minutes meeting Lita. Uh, Lita. Rita. 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 I told Sarah that, that story and she got mad at me for making fun of you for crying. You know what? You can I fuck off with that. That was a moment, too. No, it was <laughs> awesome and beautiful. So I'm always going to mock you for it. Oh, shit. And Anthrax. We met Anthrax. We met... We saw... <laughs> you passed out in Weed, California. <laughs> was it weed? It, it was weed, weed California, <laughs> California, man. Holy shit, that was the most athlete You dick. Town you in the always world. do that. <clears throat> I give you money to get the funds. You fucking dick. Dude. Yeah, I was. I was, uh, I was, I was I've, I've got, got character, character flaws. <laughs> One, One of them growth, is. Dude. Growth, we're sober now. Yeah, we, 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 I like, like, like she's, she's saying, saying they, they, they gave me money for, for, to, to find pot. pot. You, you know, know and we in California, California cause cause we were at a, a thing. thing. Yeah, we edibles, edibles which I'll, I, don't I don't like edibles. edibles. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> but they <laughs> sold us four of them, and two of them had like a two X on them, which meant they were twice as strong. And in weed, California, their milligrams were like two hundred. And, and I, I gave, gave one, one to a lady whose name I shall not mention, but she is of a true rock star level. And uh, the love you. Reason we I'm were so in sorry. California. I'm, I'm so sorry. Yeah, yeah they dedicated a show to us. us. While I was out back behind the dumpster with the cops standing over me asking Steve if I'm going to be okay. okay. He's like, oh, oh yeah, we're, we're from Alaska. Alaska. He's fine. <laughs> While I was violently and silently vomiting up whatever that plate of evil ass food that, that we shoveled, shoveled uh, jalapeno, jalapeno beer. beer. <laughs> That, that lady, lady passed, passed out at the truck stop and thought I might have roofied her. Thank God, God we cleared all that up. <laughs> all all this is are true. fun if you know you're taking them. Yeah, yeah so, so fuck anyway. weed, weed brownies and weed California. California. <laughs> but my last conscious <laughs> thought is a picture of me by the sign going <laughs> and then <laughs> rot out. Uh, good, good times. times. So, why don't we just keep rambling until this time it runs out so that we can start the next question fresh. That's just fun, see? See, we, we could do, do something, something like this all the time. The, the second question is basically a simple kind of wish, wishful one. Wishful, wishful. Just, just something, something you hope in the last, this has been almost a year, year right? Mm -hmm. That humanity or our society or society as a whole learns from this or something that you hope we achieve because of it. it you know? How much we need connection mm -hmm. um you know you can't you're on the you, everybody's distracted with all these devices and you think you're connected but you're not and we need human connection we need that and take that moment to realize you don't have to work that weird nine to five most of the stuff can be done remotely now um so that you can have a life and it doesn't have to be this gridlock you know you can still achieve all these things. I think, I think that, that is something they're going to pull out of this because you don't, don't have, have to go to work and, and people are more productive from home. Well, that, I mean, it's, it <clears> be, <throat> I mean, there, it's a double-edged sword, you know, obviously some folks like to get out of the house and go do, that's great. But for those that, you know, want to contribute to the, what is it, fucking green, uh, you know, just well, being Chris cool. Chris Barton <laughs> on the other yeah. side of that, you know, like, like for him, the structure of going to work and the routine is important, but, but he doesn't have to do it all the time, and, and it shouldn't be a drive, it should be, not a drive, but like a, like, like you have to work, work this many hours right. or whatever, it well, should be split, split up more. Well, just, um, you know, you have a deadline, and when you achieve that deadline, you know, it's up to you when you achieve that deadline, but it's just the flexibility of being able to live your life and still do your work and First, uh, you know be employed obviously but now there's all these things that um we've seen other other than you know and the entertainment we need that 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 needs to be happening 
<laughs> you know, that's a huge. If people, people will chill out, out and not go, go to the bar, bar not, not go, go to the places for like six months, months we'll, we'll be fine. fine. Yeah, it, it sucks. sucks. It's Sarah, does suck. her, <laughs> her, her point was the, the pity thing. thing. We, we should be, we should feel sorry for ourselves. And I, I feel this way too. But then together know that we're all suffering. And, and if, if we, we just suffer together, together a little while longer, we'll, we'll beat this. Yeah. yeah. And, and now, now the vaccine's, vaccine's coming out. And, and we're hopefully by summertime, we'll at least be able to do it. i tell you what, <laughs> those penny picker uppers are the only ones that are going to have safe mosh pits right now. Because they stay away from each other so they don't take a high kick to the face. So that might be the new moshing. Although, I like the bubble ideas. Those did look kind of fun. Oh my, my god, god, in a mosh, mosh pit, a wall of... fucking kidding me, dude? I put my pants call. laughing. Bet, I so if they give you, you like, posy pads or some shit <laughs> when you get your fucking bubble, because... <coughs> dude, I'm laughing. I'm laughing. We'd, We'd have, have to have, have some industrial strength, strength mosh, mosh pit bubbles to do it. it. You'd <laughs> have to... Yeah. They'd, They'd have to be made out of, like... Dude, that, that would be insane. insane. People would be bouncing. Like, like imagine, <laughs> like they'd be bouncing like, ten feet know, in the air. Guys, so then I could just be. Yeah. yeah. Dude, never mind. Like, it takes crowds to a whole new level. Dude, that could be great. It'd, it'd be, be like, like when Kirk Hammett kicked that big black ball into the face head. It just bands, dude. Bands and giant bubbles. Oh my god. Must be on the rail though. That was just. Somebody get stuck in the ceiling. Oh, oh my god. god. See? See? That's, That's beautiful. beautiful. Ladies, Ladies and gentlemen, gentlemen Tracy fucking Abbott, my best, best friend. This, this woman literally kept me alive for like, uh, several, several years. Paris and Productions. We yeah. do have cups for sale. Get your fancy cup. You're, You're going to get fancier, fancier, so you should get these cheap ones, ones because the price is about to go up. And, and I hope you're right handed because you can only represent if you're right handed. So, yeah. Here's the reason for that is my cup has rot, rot on that side, and I asked her to make sure that when I held my cup, the rot. I'm right-handed. I'm just fuck. I'm representing. See, now, now we get this going, going and with what you're doing, and if I actually get Dyerson in production to start, like, being, being a real business, business I've got my band manager for the band, band my photographer for live music, I've, I've got, got my associate producer and personal manager, manager who the poor girl tries, but she has no idea what she's up against. Um, um, hi, mom. This, this episode's, episode's gonna, gonna be tight. tight. Two, Two of the most powerful women I know, Sarah, Sarah Peterson, Peterson, Tracy, Tracy fucking Abbott. Abbott. Also, used to be a DJ, DJ in, in Alaska, Alaska. <clears throat> um, for K Well. Yeah, yeah. Used to sit in a motorhome in the middle of the right, right now. now. About right. Uh, how long do you guys, guys do, do that for twice, a week? Twice for tots. Yeah, yeah. usually. Four, four yeah, it was it was a big event. event. Toys for Tots, tots. Like raising money, money for children. No, they're still doing that. That's yeah, of, yeah, no, no, uh, it's great. Um, yeah. I don't know if they did it in a motorhome this year because of COVID, but you can ask Bob. Yeah, yeah Bob or got, our broth. Bob got frostbite. What? Well, yeah, it's years ago. Or no, that was Cliffy. Cliff, that's right. He passed away. Oh. Well, well, not, not from, from the toys. toys from the no, 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 no. Okay, okay we're, we're going to go ahead and edit this out. Okay. And three, two, one. one. Rest, Rest in peace, Cliff. And <laughs> why did I laugh? Damn, Damn it. it. Whatever. I'm, I'm keeping it, it in. He would have laughed that. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Just go on. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, well, that, that was, was pretty much, much it. Tracy, Tracy anything, anything you want to say? Any shout outs? Any yeah. uh, thing anybody, anybody could do to help a cherry? Oh, or fuck yeah, dude. Um, no. Um, the Rice Center on Hilltop in Tacoma, if you're local. Like, if you want to volunteer. Um, if you have clothes you would like to donate. Or if you're in need of food or clothing. Or mental health services. Or um, substance use disorder services if you're bilingual uh, hispanic we got that covered come on in we'll help you are you going to learn spanish yourself you can teach me i'm trying to learn just like it's so weird i'm going to people. try but thankfully um a couple of these guys speak english so That's yeah nice. enough to that we can you know get by but i want to learn yes 
All right. I, I hope, hope to God, God the audio on this came out all right, because in my headphones, I got a lot of echoes because I haven't done this setup before, which, which means, means it's going to suck, suck, which means... We can means redo it if we have to. Yeah. yeah. I have Friday. I, I don't work again Thursday, Friday. Well, if we have to redo it, we'll just do it the over the phone. Okay. But this is nice. It's nice to have somebody in my studio, and it looks great, So, but I can't wait to be able to start doing live ones like this. All right. I love you, buddy. Love you. Lifers. If you don't know what that means, I have a tattoo. I'm in. I know you do. <laughs> I got to get. That's my next tattoo. As a matter of fact, I should get the lifer one for sure. <laughs> sure. Green bestie chat. So well, yeah. Well, you know it's, it's funny, funny because on my leather, leather jacket, jacket I'm Lucy. Over here. Yeah. I am not doing that again. Out of my I almost did it. I almost did it. I almost fucking. You're fancy. Play, no, I almost played the headphone game again with the thing. Um. On um, Lucy, my leather jacket, I still have the original BFF thing because I am truly the BFF. F, the best friend. Fuck it forever. Are you sure that somebody didn't act a fool and somebody else was trying to help him out and then it got fucking broken? And then, yeah, so there you go. Merry Christmas. It's not like anything I remember. You definitely don't. You Look at that. Don't. Look at that. You're welcome. Thank you, Tracy. Say bye. Merry Christmas. Hey, tell everybody to subscribe to my channel. Oh, subscribe to his channel because he needs that for Some a reason. reason. She doesn't comprehend. He needs that for a reason, and it's so probably make a good one. Millions of dollars one day. Hey, do you make money? Years. Yeah, do this so he can make money so he can take me to McDonald's. Yes, get, get some make motherfucking ribs. ribs. I all hate right. McDonald's, but yeah, anyway, do that. Thank, Thank you, you for watching. I love you all. I love all right, you. bye. Oh, you're actually leaving? Okay, well, I'll just film you leaving, too. No, no, go. No, we're good. Get, get out. Get out. <laughs> get out. Just, you know, leave. Um, I love you, no, Tracy. I, Be I, safe I, and do me a favor and I text me when like you get home. Kind of... Oh, nice fucking hoodie. I just saw Phil glaring at me when you put well, your coat. How did you miss that? Well, because I wasn't paying attention because I'm broke. <laughs> the medalist motherfucker I know right there, folks. And three, two, one, we're out. Thanks, Thanks for, for listening. listening. This, this is been a Dice production. You can do this on the bar or on the phone. Stay sane. Listen to the metal. Listen to the metal. Listen to the metal. You're free. You're free. And freedom is beautiful. And, uh, you know, it'll take time to restore chaos.